Audrey West says that epiphany is a promise that God is here, whether we recognize it or not, whether we notice the signs. I wonder about all of the things in our lives that we don't notice because we're too busy doing other things. I had a friend once who said that he had never seen a deer on the side of the road. I think he was so focused on driving that he never noticed this. And I tried to convince him that he had probably passed about 100 in his life, but um, maybe, maybe he saw one and thought of me one day. I think of all the beautiful sunsets that I've seen and the ones I've missed too, where I look out the window and realize, oh, that was probably a good one, as it it just goes away. Sometimes we don't notice or hear the wisdom of children. But on Thursday, uh, with our confirmation class, I heard some very wise children, and I was blessed by that. Everyone who was there was. A star led these magi to Jesus. And when that star stopped, it meant that they had arrived and they were overcome with joy. They had each bought gifts or brought gifts for this child, this child who hadn't given them anything yet. And after kneeling down and paying him homage, the magi opened up their treasure chests. And I love this image of a treasure chest. I don't know when my obsession with treasure chests began. It could have been from uh, the cartoon Donald Duck uh, when he had all those piles of gold and there were treasure chests in it. It could have been from stories I read as a kid or maybe it was that treasure chest at the dentist's office that we got to dig through after When I came here, I decided to have my own treasure chest, and I have two of them. And so when people visit me in the office, they can pick something, usually kids, but sometimes parents too. I have great great little trinkets or um, things available in those treasure chests. Sometimes treasure chests are really costly and they're just as valuable as what might be inside them if it's gold or rare coins or things like that. My treasure chests are not costly at all and the gifts inside them aren't either. Maybe, maybe two or three bucks at the most for one of them. But sometimes things that don't cost any money are worth the most like the origami stars with a word. We have to remember this. It's not always about the money we can spend or or how we can give in that way, but how we can serve, things we can share. Today our scripture tells us about magi and gifts they brought to Jesus, and you get to receive a gift as well. I think most of you know about the Star Words, and I'm glad that I'm here again this year to give them out. I think last year as I started, it was unclear about what to do. As I um, started making the words, I, I, it becomes um, relaxing, and I made so many that I took them to my, my pastor's conference meeting, and I had a little tin that used to have mints in it, and I passed it around, and I said, to everybody, take a Star Word, and um, they were so glad to have one. Maybe some of them had their own at, at their church, but they were so glad to receive one, and one pastor, I, I won't say his name, but I don't know if he wasn't listening or what, but between um, the, the cute little stars and the container that l- used to have mints in it, he ate his. He put it in his mouth. That would have been a, a one for a good idea or a bad idea for the children's sermon. That's not written in here. Um, 
Where was I? <laughs> but I, these are special to me, and I'm glad that I can give them to you. When the Magi were sent, it was one star that led them to follow Jesus. And in the past decade or more, churches have been doing this tradition to provide people with a guiding word for their next year. I've also made, um, I made about 250, I think, um, for the church. So I want you to take one for yourself and pick your word, but I want you to pick a couple others for your friends or your family and give it to them or somebody at work. And I said this um, to the kids at confirmation and one kid said, I have a friend that's a Christian and I can give him this. And I said, you know, um, you can give this to any of your friends. I mean, some of the words might say pray or heal or something like that, but um, a lot of the words say inspire or um, focus or motivate or awe. And so we had a good discussion about that, about how we can um, share with other people and, and share the things that are exciting and neat about our faith. We believe that God speaks to us in many ways. So I encourage you to take a star and use it to hear God's voice. It's not a direct communication from God, but it can help you pray to God. It can help inspire you. It might not be earth shattering, but what if it is? What if it changes you or motivates you or inspires you in the next year? And maybe you didn't really like your word last year. I'm not looking at anyone in particular, but um, you could try again this year, even if you only uh, have it in your mind for a day. And we included ways to use the stars in your bulletin. And one of my favorite says this. By receiving a star word chosen at random, we practice the spiritual task of receiving. It is not we who are in control in this moment. Instead, we trust that God is present. And we let go of our desire to cultivate or control. This was true for me last year, as I had in mind certain stars that I wanted, but I picked at random and I did not get those stars. But in fact, what I got was better. I got the word build, and over the last year I've built um, a great community and made some really good new friends. And I didn't know that would happen like that when I picked the star, but it was so perfect. And I have that star at home still, um, right above my desk. I think I'm gonna, gonna frame it and write the year on it and, and make a star for myself every year. As you go, you'll be given your own star word and it's up to you how you use it. You could also pick your own word for the year. Many people do this. But trust that God speaks to you and through you in ways like the star words, but in so many other ways. This is just one way, one possibility. Many people today study the, the stars through astronomy or zodiac signs, and they look at what they learn to guide them through their lives. The Magi were probably like this. They noticed the stars in ways other people didn't. Something told them that it was important to be present with this child born in Bethlehem. Even though they were not Jewish people, they likely studied the stars. Yet the stars guided them to Bethlehem. The Messiah is not only for people who study or practice religion the exact same way we do. I always appreciate the words of 1 Corinthians, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. 
God knows us fully. God knows our wor world fully. And we have so much more to discover about God's love, God's vision for all of us. But for now, there's so much left to the unknown. We have questions we want to ask God. Why did you do this? Why didn't you do this or that? And I believe that one day they will be answered or we'll be in a mindset and surrounded by the love of God and just know that some of the things we thought mattered don't anymore. But for now, amidst the questions, the joys and sorrows of this life, we ask that God would continue to be revealed in our world today. Remember, God is here among us, whether or not we notice the signs. But God is always reaching out to us, helping us to see. God loves our entire world so much, the entire cosmos. And that is why God came to earth in Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God with us. This Emmanuel is always for us, reaching out to us, to be made known among us and all of the world, today and always. Amen.